close your eyes and focus on your breath. When you breathe in, notice where you feel the breath coming in. When you breathe out, notice how you feel it going out. Wherever in the body the movement of the breath is most prominent, stay right there where you see it clearly. And try to keep your attention right there with the feeling of the breath. Don't let it wander off. If it does wander off, just drop whatever it is you've been thinking about and come right back. And you'll be right back there with the breath, because the breath is right here. It's the closest thing to your awareness. It's what keeps the body and mind together. So when you're centered on the breath, you're very close to your mind, because this is an important place to be, because your mind shapes things through its intentions. When the Buddha talks about karma, this is what he's talking about. We shape our world through our actions. It's what we do that determines a lot of things that we're going to experience. And so we want to make sure that what we do is done with good intentions, skillful intentions. The problem is that oftentimes we don't know what our intentions are. We do something and afterwards we ask ourselves, well, what was that all about? Why did I do that? It's because you're not really right there. Or if you are right there, you, the mind doesn't have any strength to withstand impulses that otherwise it would know are unskillful. So by staying here, you're right at the right place to understand your mind, and it's also a good place to give the mind some strength, to gain some strength from just staying right here, because the mind uses up its energy by running around. So give it a place to rest, but rest with alertness. That's what strengthens it more than just resting when you sleep. When you're alert, you know what's going on. That builds good qualities in the mind. It's like an exercise for the mind. Yeah, that it's an exercise in stillness. With the body, you exercise it by moving around. But here you have to exercise it by protecting it as it stays still. And the exercise then gets in the exercise of what's called mindfulness, your ability to remember something, keep it in mind and alertness, your ability to know what's going on, and a quality called ardency, when you want to do this well. When you're doing it well, the mind can settle down, and you can see clearly what's going on. Unskillful intentions come up, you can say no. Skillful intentions come up, and you can say yes. So right here is where you pass your judgment on what's worth doing. Because that's the main thing you want to work past judgment on, is what you are doing. Make sure that what you do is skillful. As for the rest of the world, other people have their karma. We live in a world where there's a lot of ups and downs because of everybody's karma jostling against everybody else's. But you want to make sure that what you put into the system is good. As for what other people put in the system, that's their choice. Ultimately, each of us is free to choose, yes or no. Even people who are very close to you, they make choices that you wouldn't make. I mean, you can't stop them. Sometimes you can have a good influence, but sometimes your influence just doesn't have any effect. So that's one of the things we have to live with in this world. As so John Sawat used to say, the person we're most responsible for is ourselves. Make sure that what we do, say, and think is skillful. And that's the most a human being can do. So start right here. Get the mind set on the breath so you can be alert to what's going on in the mind. Sort things out inside. And that way your actions will be a good influence not only in your life but in the lives around you. Even people when they passed away, and you can make merit and dedicate it to them. That helps them wherever they've gone. It all starts right here. The goodness of the world has to start with you. You can't wait for other people to do the right thing or be good people. You've got to start with yourself. 